Hello, good afternoon everyone. I'm happy you are still around, close to the end and close to the coffee break. So I will introduce you NetGuardians. Um, as soon as the slides, I know if I have to press, perfect. So I will talk today about risk, about operational risk and anti-fraud within banks and mitigating that risk. That's basically the goal of NetGuardians. And I will be very quick on NetGuardians. Uh, just a few things to know. We are a bit more than, than 30 people within the company, having a bit more than 30 customers, and focusing on banking, for sure, being a fintech company, having headquarters in Switzerland, and offices in Kenya, Singapore, and Poland for the R&D. So I will be more than happy to discuss a bit more uh, after the presentation on that, but today I really want to tell you a story. And that's a story about a guy who's working in a nice commercial bank in Switzerland. He's called Peter. And Peter is a very nice guy. He's a very loyal back office employee. He's get his bonus every year. He's staying late at work, really the guy you want to hire in the bank. But Peter is getting in trouble at home. I'm sure you know. <laughs> His family is really keen on moving to a nice house. He's living in a flat in Geneva, you know, the prices are quite high. And uh, he really needs to upgrade his house. His kids are coming from school saying, oh, uh, my friends are going to the swimming pool at home, we don't have swimming pool, and so on. So he's not able to afford a nice house with a swimming pool, and he's working in a nice bank in, in Geneva. So he remember once that his very good friend who's working in the same bank called Monica. She's an IT administrator, and she told him once, oh, I can upgrade user access to validated transaction, uh, meaning that I can change the customer, I mean the user access to enable you to validate your own transactions, meaning you would be able to input and authorize a transaction on its own. So being able to do things under the radar. So one day he just found a stupid excuse. His boss was not around. He needed to very quickly do a transaction uh, for a very important customer. And Monica said, no issue. I will upgrade your profile. And uh, you will be able to input and authorize your transaction during the next hour. So she did that. And then he suddenly did a small transfer from a dormant account no one will notice within the bank. So I just want to show you now how with NetGuardian software we, you can really solve these issues. That is around collusion of user because we are looking at IT user activity. Monica, what is she doing? We are looking at back office user activity, front office user activities and channels, and we are looking at transaction from a behavior perspective to raise red flags when strange things are happening. So let's see now how we are catching Peter in that case. So here we can start. Oh, if we can just come back to the video, thank you. We are logging on our uh, software. On the software, we come directly to a dashboard. We'll come back on that later. But if now we look at the controls, the controls are the red flags that are running, so some controls that are running within the bank to detect strange behavior. So we have plenty of predefined controls. We can see some around cybercrime, account takeover, and so on. And if we drill down into one control here, we can see that it's looking for specific behavior of users that are, for instance, bypassing transaction by actually transacting and authorizing their own transaction, exactly what Peter did. So for instance, now, if we go back on the dashboard that is populated by all these red flags here, then we can see that on the dashboard, we have 10 red flags. The most strange behavior are coming from Peter and some of his friends from the back office. And now, 
if we look a little bit about the topic of these strange red flags, we can see that it's coming from identity theft. It's related to people doing transaction while they should be on holidays. And for instance, it's auto validation of their own transactions. And here we can see that Peter is a high scorer on the heat map of risk people within the bank. So now, with the same software, you can do some investigation. So starting to do some forensics investigation and to drill down on Peter to really understand what is exactly going on. So here, when you drill down on Peter, you can see that he did a transfer. He did a transfer uh, of this Franz Schulman account. And when now you drill down into the financial transfer, you can see all the financial transactions within the bank. And you have now the ability to exactly the amount that was done on Franz Schulman account. And you can just see it was half a million Swiss franc and with some fees for, for the bank. Even when he's frauding, he's putting the fees for the bank. I, I guess it should be a standard workflow. So uh, then you want to drill down, how oh, come was he able to do this transaction on his own? So now you can drill down into the back of his user activity. So you are not anymore on the transaction level, you are actually on the activities of the user. And on that screen, you can see that he's inputted the transaction, then he went to view it again, he changed a little bit the transaction, and then he authorized the transaction. So he was able indeed to input and authorize a transaction, which is really a four eyes rule violation uh, that you really want to avoid within your bank. So basically now, last step, when you want to look at IT user activities, now we are on the screen that show you what IT users are doing, then if you drill down on Peter activity here, you exactly see that Monica, just a few minutes before he did this suspicious transaction, <coughs> authorized, uh, authorized him, was changing his user profile to make sure that he was able to do that. So you can really detect the collision approach with uh, this type of software. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. a lot. <laughs> on, the, on the last slide, I'm just showing some red, but I cannot skip that, skip that to go to the last slide. But just showing some reference and, uh, for instance, highlighting that all the major uh, East African banks, commercial banks, are using our software and a lot of private banks are in Geneva, for instance. Thank Thanks you very much. So a lot of Peters in Eastern Africa these days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I will leave it now to uh, the uh, the panel. Uh, if you have any, please please come up. Please stay here. Uh, if you have uh, any uh, questions on uh, on this, yes, please go ahead. Yes, yeah. hello. Uh, Menno uh, from AB Nemro. Um, cybersecurity fraud detection is one of uh, our. Um, Capabilities uh, um, we love to uh, invest in, but there are already uh, um, uh, software applications running, of course. So how do you deal with uh, banks, potential clients who already have uh, software in place? Yeah. And what is your lead time then? So basically, we see a lot of uh, banks having a lot of software to cover either the IT side. There are a lot of software in that area. A lot of software to cover transaction analytics a little bit on back office and front office user analytics. But our strength is to correlate these three main information, so transaction, IT activities, and business activities together. So usually we find a lot of banks having some silo solution in that, in that uh, range. So we very often reuse what existing solutions are providing to build this, I would say, holistic approach around uh, fraud detection. Uh, so basically, um, uh, with many banks, uh, we can see that collusion is one of the key aspects we are targeting and is very hard to cover with sil silo uh, solution in place. Uh, so if banks are already having some solution in place, it's very often uh, some silo uh, solution. So we will very often find a very good fit, even if some, some solution are in place. And in regard of leads time to, uh, to close a deal and so on, I would say 
a bit a lawyer answer. It depends. I mean, if the budget is here, if it's an, under the radar and so on. But basically, it would be around four months if they had a case. They really need to do something, or it's due to compliance needs. To uh, two years, if you have to budget that for the year after, and so on. But I can give you my card. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, please go ahead. So maybe you have some nice examples. Uh, uh, how many? Cases in case that you actually notice some suspicious behavior, how many did you stop? What was basically the value? And could you actually stop before happening so that you notice suspicious behavior? Because yeah. that would be the end goal, right? Yeah. So it's a very interesting question. I will start with the second one on uh, if we can stop things happening. So all our control uh, are usually red flags in regard of human behavior. So it's not. It does not mean, for instance, when you start on the dashboard that Peter, because his name is big, is a fraudster. It means that he's violating some policies, rules, and maybe uh, he may require a little bit more training. Maybe uh, the branch, guys from that branch are a little bit lost in regard on processes and so on. So our controls are, I would say, uh, only red flags that ensure that you can build then some analytics on top of these red flags and start doing some investigation. So we are fraud prevention, meaning that it's usually way before a fraud that we, we get uh, this information, meaning that if suddenly someone from the front office is starting to screen all customer names every day and starting to do some inquiries on dormant account every day, that, that's something you, you can monitor, you have this information, you can drill down in, in the forensics, so you can re be really proactive into fraud, because usually it's not uh, one-click activities, and in average it's 18 months to, uh, to really discover a fraud huh, within the bank, and many of them are not discovered. And on the, on the first question, or more on, on the rate of uh, capture and so on, I, I wish we could be more uh, proactive with the customer we have to exactly know, but banks are usually very, not very keen on sharing this information, for sure. I'm sure everybody agree on that. Uh, but for sure, it helps. Uh, they find a lot of red flags and can investigate, and it really helps uh, into that. Huh? Thank you very much. Should we give a round of applause? Thanks a lot.